In these blizzard setup with my opponent picking the Goya's territory as his first pick, I decided to go with the territory of Mato Grosso do Sul. And then with my opponent selecting the bottom territory of Sul, I picked the middle one. I would say the middle territory of Sul is the best territory to pick of all of the three when you are going to place your capital on Mato Grosso do Sul, because it's only one territory which doesn't border with it. So with picking that territory you know that your opponent cannot add any counter-attack army there which would prevent you from capturing that region. And then my goal when picking the territories was to make my capital as less blocked as possible, and as the second priority to make my opponent's army blocked as much as possible. The first priority went to my capital, is because with me going second I'm more or less forced to put the majority of my troops in my capital, while with my opponent going first, he could add his troops to wherever he wants and then at the end of the turn fortify them to his capital back and be safe with that. Most importantly I didn't want to select this territory as with my opponent selecting it, he would block his way to invade the Sul region from going through that territory. As these two territories are actually not connected, even though at first sight they might look bordering each other. So the only way for him to invade the Sul region with his capital army would be going all the way around through the regions of Nordest and Sudest. Then I didn't want to select this one either, so I would be potentially more capable of capturing and holding the region of Sul, while my opponent would be less capable to invade it. That it would potentially give my capital more maneuverability. And then I didn't want to select these two if possible as well, so my opponent's capital would be more blocked especially this one, so my capital would have the way to attack from that side if needed, while my opponent's capital troops would stay blocked from attacking through that way until I go through that territory by myself. And then if my opponent selected both of these territories then I will still have full access to go capturing his territories and invade his captured regions with my capital troops, if like I'm blocked from another side or so. In the troop setup stage I put 27 of them in my capital, while 5 of them to that territory over here, which was absolutely unnecessarily and probably even bad. As it was very likely that my opponent was going to add his troops in one of the territories which would give him the access to crush them, and that's what actually happened. That blitz roll gave him the attacker's advantage, but fortunately I lost only 2 troops more. But the good news was that with my opponent unnecessarily capturing these territories in the right side regions he made the way for my capital to attack from the right side, while still keeping the way from the left side for some other turn when it's needed. Also everything combined, gave me a nice opportunity to take over the region of so properly guarding both of the non-capital borders, and then invading my opponent into all of his captured regions without unblocking his capital army. Unfortunately I forgot about his 7 troops army in the 6 troop region, but that didn't really matter too much. As at the end I still ended up of holding the region of Sel, and then with my opponent fortifying some more troops out from his capital to that territory over here, I decided to use my capital's army to crush them in order to possibly get a good attacker's advantage, and this is what happened, I lost 4 troops fewer than my opponent. With me taking those troops down that obviously unleashed my opponent's capital to invade me into the region of Sul, but that didn't really matter because with my opponent invading it and capturing all of those territories, his capital became very weak and I've got even 99% chance to blitz his capital which I definitely took, 